so finally, we'll talk a little bit about fraud. And, and Charlie, again, touched on this well. Is, you know, there's, uh, the fraud systems today are, are built with a mix of different tools. Uh, NoSQL, SQL, there's caches and those types of things for fast, you know, real-time fraud detection. Uh, but some of the challenges around that are data has to be moved between systems to serve different purposes, whether it's SQL or NoSQL or the like. It, there's a lot of data movement, um, a lot of pre-aggregation, and it causes false positives and sometimes even false negatives. And the value add that Connecticut brings to the table is the ability to do the real-time lookup of data for pattern analysis, uh, distance vectors for, you know, we talked a little bit about jumping zip codes, um, if I want to be able to look, a lot of companies are starting to go after if I, you swipe your credit card or you, an ATM transaction, and um, if I swipe it again within so much time, how far away am I from a location perspective, and could I physically get there in that time? And you can start looking at those types of patterns. You can see patterns of fraud as well. And then we used the deep learning functions to go look at pattern detection and scoring. Uh, pattern detection and predictive analytics, and we actually can score, so we can actually, as transactions come through, run them against the scoring model as well to have new insights to um, patterns of fraud. Um, the other nice piece that Connecticut opens up as well is, since I have a SQL database, I'm able to do analytics without having to move data. So I can query, see real-time uh, transactions, I can see real-time fraud to a dashboard, I can see and, and visualize those additional outputs of the data without having to move it to another system. So it's just a nice way to serve multiple disciplines from one platform in a real-time fashion. 